Hello, this is Michael Mira from Hawkrid Systems, and today we're going to use SolidWorks Manage to help us automate our purchasing process. What we're going to do is generate a process, and within this process, we're going to link it to a company and then use that company information to automatically send out a report to that company's contact when this process is complete. We're going to also use the bill of materials functionality to bring over our bill of materials and we're going to use filtering and a report to generate a specific request for quote using the information from the company that we specify so when the report gets generated it's going to only show the purchase materials from that specific company let's take a look at how we set up this process in our tree i'm going to go to my processes tab right click on the purchase request process and look at the administration side of things. I can do this because I'm an admin. Once it opens, I'm going to navigate to my fields tab and we're going to focus on the two, supplier and supplier email. Our supplier is an object type, which means it's linking to another object in our system. In this case, we are linking it to our companies. We also have the supplier email, which is a lookup type. What this means is that I'm going to use the information from the supplier compared to my company. And if they match, I'm going to grab the email of the contact from that company. Looking at our options here, we are looking at our resources and our objects. We're grabbing our company. We are saying that if the company name from our companies matches the supplier name, from this form here that we're going to use the value for our contact email. Let's take a look at the reports now. I'm going to open this section and jump ahead to reports. And we have a purchase request form report that we'll see when we generate it. However, I want to automate this report's creation. I'm going to come to the automate report section here. We only have one field group for this process, so it'll be default. We only have one report, which is the purchase request form. I want to save it to the related files under the files folder. And I want to do that when the stage ends. And it's going to be that initial stage when the user creates the request. So uh, the stage is purchase request start. I'll add that for my automated report. And then this will generate when the person sends it from the initial state to the second stage of the process. Here's a quick look of what this report's going to look like. We have our purchase request for quote. We have an image that we're bringing in. We have some of the information about this quote, and then we're showing the bill of materials. The one nice thing about this bill of materials though is we're using some filters in the data. If I open my filter group, you'll see that we're, we're saying that we only want to show the items of the bill of material where the supplier matches the supplier that we specify in the parameter. I also have a order quantity field, which I'm using as a multiplier for the bill of materials. So say I want five items and there are three of those within the bomb, I'm going to end up with 15 total. With our fields and reporting done, let's go ahead and look at the process itself. I'm going to open up the tab here and navigate to the workflow properties. And you see we have our basic workflow. Re purchase request start. It gets to sent to an approval process where it's either approved or rejected. The approve box looks a little different because that's a system stage where actions just perform automatically and then it just automatically goes to the end stage. Whereas the start and the approval requires a user input to move to the next stage. We have a report set up to get generated and attached to the process in between the purchase request start and the approval stage. And we also want to send out a notification. When this is approved, you see I have the notifications tab here and I have an email notification set up. This notification is going to send an email to the supplier that I set up in the lookup for the supplier email. It's going to send it at the end of this stage via email when this is approved. The body of this email is going to consist of our purchase request form send. It's going to give a brief message and sign it by the person who approves it. And if we go to our act attachments tab, we're going to attach all files that are attached to the files folder of this. 
and that's where we saved the PDF of our report. While there's a little more that goes into the configuration of a process, everything that we want to show you here in the configuration side for this specific one is done. So I'm going to go ahead and go to complete and finish. And let's take a look at this process in action. In the processes section of my manage user interface, I'm going to go to my purchase request and select new. Description will just be a multi-tool purchase request. I'm going to change the requester. It does use the default user and I'm logged in as admin. I'm just going to quickly change that to say Rohan. And my supplier is going to be the Hawk Ridge Test Supply Company. You'll notice that the requester email and the supplier email are both lookup fields. And when I save it, it's going to look at the requester and the supplier respectively and provide the email for the object that I selected. It also will generate the part number. The last thing I need to do is figure out how many I'm purchasing. So in this amount needed field, I'm just going to go ahead and say, I need 500 of these assemblies. Now onto the bill of materials. Let me navigate to the bomb tab. I'm going to select the edit option. And I already have an existing bill of materials for this project. So I'm going to use the copy from. It's another record that I'm pulling from. And I did a webinar recently, so I have an existing one in my bill of materials. I have my camping multi-tool. And I'm using the procurement bomb variant. Everything else looks good, so I'm going to copy this. And you can see I populate the bomb accordingly. Now within this bill of materials, I have a couple things that are built in-house and a couple things that are purchased, denoted by the part type. And then in my supplier, I have a couple different suppliers, but the primary supplier being our Hawk Ridge Test Supply Company. Now the nice thing about the report that I generate is that it's going to filter out all the built part types, so we're only, only going to see the purchased. But then the second filter I put in is going to filter out to only the one supplier that I specify. So when I create the report, it's only going to show me the Hawk Ridge Test Supply Company. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Go back to my Properties tab and send this to the next stage. It's going to give prompt me if I'm sure. And it's going to generate the report with the parameters. So once again, selecting the Hawk Ridge Test Supply Company and the quantity that I need. Submit that. And it's now in the next stage. And if I go to my related files, you can see that the PDF has now been attached. I open up the PDF and you can now see what this looks like populated with actual data. So it shows me my bill of materials process reference number, along with everything that I have purchased from the Hawk Ridge Test Supply Company and my multiplier. So most things I only needed one of to create this assembly. However, the wide spacer and the pin, I had two pins and three wide spacers respectively. I'll go ahead and close this out, go to the properties. This will be someone else typically who approves it, but I'm going to accept this process. Select the approve, save, and send it to the next stage. And finally, since we have that approved notification, what happened is I received my email. It's signed by the person who approved it, and I was logged in at the admin at the time. And we have our PDF attached to this. So now your vendor can take a look, see what you need, and provide the quote and respond to the email. If you are interested in learning more about how SOLIDWORKS Manage can be utilized for processes, specifically engineering changes, please check out our webinar, How to Master Bill of Materials and Changes with SOLIDWORKS Managed, link below, available on our Hawk Ridge Systems blog. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more data management solutions on our YouTube channel from Hawk Ridge Systems.